Hi, welcome to Deployment News, episode 12. I'm Johan, and with me today I have... Amy. We will be your host today, talking about shiny things in the community, such as... Well, actually, I'm going to take a break. Before we talk about community stuff, I have to brag on my dog, Ray. Um, Ray is a yellow lab slash greyhound that I rescued a year ago yesterday, and she passed her good citizen test, which is actually a really hard test to pass if, if you don't prepare for it. Uh, so we went through professional training to get ready for it, and it enables her to go on to become a therapy dog. One of the things that I'm very passionate about is autism awareness. So my hope is that the dog can go through the correct therapy training to become a dog to help children with autism. Yeah. And there, there is a story to the name also. Yeah, so she's named after the female lead character in The Force Awakens. Of course. Yes. <laughs> so, on to technical things. Yeah, so uh, our friends at Two Point have released a new tool called Happy Trigger. Yes, indeed. Uh, so what Happy Trigger does is it's a utility that allows you to shorten the default interval in which a config manager, config manager client reports where it got its content from. So that could be from the DP, from peer, peer cache, from branch cache. Uh, that default interval is 24 hours. That's a pretty long time. Yeah, it's a long time. And if you're really into reporting or if you want to control the behavior a little bit more, this is that that pre-step to really have an, an, an understanding of how this whole thing actually works. Yeah. Um, I know that you've done a lot of research on it, actually, um, and you may or may not have prepared a post. I may have, actually. You may have prepared a post. Yeah. Um, so I know that you have an environment set up, so I think it would be really great if you could demo this in your already set up environment. So let's, uh, yes, uh, let's start with the, uh, the post that you mentioned. Sure. Uh, on deployment research, our blog. If you search for the magical word uh, peer, you will find a blog post on how to configure peer caching, and there is also a link to, to branch cache later in this post. But all in all, if you scroll down into that blog post, far, far in the end, this is where you can see one of the log files where uh, clients are reporting their data content sources up to the site server. And on the site server itself, you actually see a good representation on how the network is behaving or being used by these clients. So if I go over to my demo environment, what I have here is, um, well, I have a ton of VMs really, but I have my site server, CMO1, and I have uh, 10 different uh, clients, Windows 10 clients. Five of them belong to the New York site, and six of, uh, the other five belongs to the Chicago site. If I start one of them, one of the one in the Chicago site, when testing this, I was simply playing around with distributing large packages. So I will wait patiently while it's logging on. It's um, all the way in Chicago. And I think it also would help immensely if I also allowed it to connect to Chicago. There is a router in between and it helps if it's Generally, the network Running. Yeah, it helps. helps a lot. Yes. yes. Uh, note to self, start router before demo. Did you not give whiskey to your virtual networking team? <laughs> I did, apparently a bit too much also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So on this box, if I go to software center, this is where you can see I have been installing applications named 1GIG file 002. And I have a file or an application named file 001. And I've been deploying these to all these machines in my test environment. And I simply looked into what they were using for, for content. And then I went back to my site server and, and reviewed that information. So back to my site server here. Super secret password. Super secret password. Open the console. Monitoring node. Distribution status. Client date sources. And here I have nothing. I've apparently not been deploying this week. But if I go back a week or two here, I can see I actually have content. So this is from the New York site having a local DP, so much of the content is coming from, or not much, most of it is coming from the DP itself, but also from branch cache that I've enabled here. But if I go to the Chicago site, 
where I don't have a DP, you can see that most of the content actually is from peer caching. And once you download this utility from the two pipe guys, and I have a, I have a link here, I actually tweeted about it just a little while ago. It was released today. Here we go. And this is where you download the utility that uh, Amy mentioned that shortens the cycle for the upload of that information to the site server. Very, very nice. Very shiny. Very shiny, yes. Then we did an interview last week with David James, the director of engineering with the, the Config Manager team at Microsoft. And if you haven't seen that video, well, go to our YouTube page, YouTube. User Deployment Artist. Videos. And it will be the last one. So I'm not going to play it for you here, but here it is. Very nice. It's very shiny. He's someone that we don't see very often. So it's, it's great to see a nice interview yeah. with him. A lot of good behind the scenes information and cool yeah. stuff. So Ignite registration is opening, or did open, right? Yes, just recently. Yeah, so are you going to Ignite? I actually no. This is, I'm sorry, this is the first year in, since 2005. I'm not attending a Tech It or Ignite. So where can we catch you at conferences this year? I will be at MMS with you. Yes. And I did have connections also with you. With me. And speaking of these conferences, I know that you have a session on MMS together with Matthew Teagarden. Yes. That was voted the most requested session. Can, can you tell me more? Yeah, so it's, it's a Windows 10 servicing session. Everything that you need to know about how to service Windows 10, just, just as it says. Uh, so we will go through a little bit of peer-to-peer -peer stuff, but really um, helping the attendees to understand what it is that they need to do uh, when they get home to, to keep Windows 10 up to date. So practical stuff. Yeah, practical stuff. Don't want to give away too much information. Um, so you have to sign up for MMS to get any more information than that. If you already are signed up, uh, go ahead and add the session. To your schedule? Yeah, to your yeah. schedule so we can get the big room. Perfect. Yep. And um, all right, what else is going on? Um, so if you're in Chicago this Friday, you and I are actually doing an event at the Microsoft Technology Center yes. with Adaptiva. Uh, so our one hour session will be about the common Windows 10 gotchas. So a lot of things that our viewers and readers are actually pinging us about now that they're deploying Windows 10. And then Adaptiva is gonna run through how to use their tools um, to also automate things in your Windows 10 deployment. And I'm assuming also that networking stuff. Don't wanna give away too much information <laughs> as well. <laughs> Uh, but definitely make sure that you sign up if you're in the Chicago area. We are going to try and live stream it, but no promises. We did run into some snags last time we were at the Microsoft Technology Center. Yeah. Uh, certain protocols were being blocked, uh, so we had to do a, a quick workaround. Um, so first of all, don't get mad at us if it's not super shiny if we are live streaming. And then on the other hand, if you don't see anything, it's because we couldn't get it to work. So sorry. Yeah. All right. Then we have... Um the last like one or two weeks of really good blog posts yes right? shiny blog posts yeah. is what i would like to call it the shiny blog post segment one of these days we're going to have like segment titles and it'll be bam here's the segment sounds good <laughs> yep so anyway the first thing that i wanted to bring to your attention was actually something that i saw on the adaptiva facebook page and that was where uh somebody had posted a very shiny blog post about not only adding uh, Dart to your config manager or MDT boot image, but also adding Adaptiva one site to your boot image as well. Um, so I'm gonna pull up that post here. Um, I haven't had a chance to read through it in entirety, but I've skimmed through it. So I ended up tagging you on Facebook in the post. Uh, so I, I thought it was something that would be very interesting for our readers. Um, yeah, I, I actually went through it quickly. And what they do is they, I mean, Dart is actually integrated with the uh, MDT boot image by default, or if you select it during the boot image, but it's being enabled very, very late in the process, like almost a minute after you select the sequence. 
This solution shows you how you can get Dart going very early in the process. So they're using the annotate XML file in the boot image to start it even before the pre-start command clicks in in the boot image. So that means that you can remote into the box really early, even before selecting a sequence, which is, I mean, that's where you want to have the remote stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that is a good blog post, so check it out. So what else? Let me see here, I have my... So, Johan, you did something unexpected recently, didn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I did a blog post about Intune. <laughs> did anybody read it? How many, how many views did you get? I, I, last time I checked, it was like 300 something. So, uh, I, I, I can actually... 300 completely shocked people in this universe. Yeah, I know. Uh, let me see if I can find my uh, website here. So on my blog, research, let's see here, 397. How about that? That's not too bad. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. They're all very surprised. So I found some other interesting things in the community, yeah. uh, a really interesting blog post. So I've, I've been helping an organization kind of late in the game uh, migrate from IE9 to IE11, uh, so it could be worse. Could be. I'm assuming Windows 7 clients. <laughs> yeah, w w Windows 7 clients. Um, so something that we ran across ran across when we started deploying um, IE11 through Config Manager was that once the clients would get IE11 and reboot and come back up, we couldn't log into the boxes anymore. Whether it was a cached account, um, a cached domain account, a cached local account a brand new account, we'd get user profile services failed to log in. It, was, it kind of, for a while, was one of those cases of the unexplained, couldn't figure out what, what was going on. And then randomly on the train on, on the way to work on Monday, I read a post from Paul Winstanley that he wrote back in 2013 that he had just retweeted. This is why I love the community, by the way. Yeah, retweeted um, this very week, yeah. Yeah, retweeted this week of something that he figured out back in 2013 and then I imagine he tweeted it because he just wanted to say, by the way, this is still going on if you're using IEAK to deploy IE11, that the user profile service will decide, not today, I'm, I'm not going to work anymore. Uh, so I'll, I'll pull up the, the tweet for you. Um, it's, it's just a simple file that you remove from app data from, um, from one of the accounts. I'm going to pull it up so I can say it correctly. IE11, um, you just... You just navigate to the, the default profile, and in, in temp files, there's uh, IE SQM data underscore setup zero dot SQM, uh, which is created by a version of the installation. If you remove it, uh, the problem goes away. And it's true, it does, it goes away. It was so nice to have one of those, like, you know, like you're laying hands on the computers and like shaking them and redeploying them and blaming Config Manager and blaming the network team and blaming the AD team and just no matter who you blame, nothing's working. And then you find out it's something that's just a legacy problem when, when you're update, up, upgrading your browser that, hey, you might have this problem and here's how you fix it. So thanks, Paul. Speaking of things of, of the past, well, not really of the past, but the Sys Internals utilities, they have, they've been around for, for quite some time now. Yeah. But you actually helped them, you had them save your day a little while ago. Yeah, so I heard that Mark Rosinovich likes to hear about case of the unexplained solved. So I had a case of the unexplained, again, blaming everybody. Um, was it printers? It, it, it was a printer, and I used Procmon to figure out why I couldn't print from a silly desk printer. And it turns out that the unnamed vendor, shame on you, had <laughs> renamed the driver. So we use a t utility called CopyTrack for our corporate devices to track how, how users are printing and, yeah. and where to bill it. Uh, very shiny, right, to help track expenses. Uh, but we use a control file, and uh, the driver name matters in the control file. Vendor changed the driver name and dropped a word in the driver name. Um, so the GPO that we were applying um, for CopyTrack was b blocking the spooler service from writing to the temp spooler that the vendor's printer creates before it sends it to the, or after it sends it to the printer spooler. So if you know anything about how printing works, 
obviously, if, if you see it go to the spooler and then clear out, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's not your computer. It's, it's not anything here. It's something over here, except in this case, it was a domain policy being applied that was saying, ah, you're not in my list, so you're not going to print. So using Procman, you were able to see that it didn't have permission to Yeah, use. access denied. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and speaking of those utilities, I know that you've been working lately on creating some, some videos of them. Yeah, so I'm working on some free videos that are going through and explaining uh, all the SysInternals tools. It's going to be video all demos. Of, all of them? All of them, yeah. Wow. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of videos. Um, it's just more of an effort for myself um, to help document things that I've learned. Um, it's something that I really value for uh, the team that I have at my work, uh, something that I want to demonstrate to them, something that we should be doing as sysadmins anyway, is whatever you learn, document it and hold the door open for the people that are coming after you. Yeah. Uh, so this will be uh, published uh, by Deployment artist, uh, but on my YouTube page, it'll be completely free, so you don't have to sign up for any services. I don't think it'd be right to charge <laughs> for uh, for these videos since this internals is free. But yeah, I mean those utilities has been a lifesaver many many times. So yeah, fantastic sanity stuff. saver. It's yeah. it's great. So that's all for this episode, that's right? It. Yeah. Thanks for saying. <laughs> that's all for this episode, <laughs> right? That's it. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. Have a great week. We did it. <laughs> <laughs>